When will my marriage improve? I've been working at it and it still seems to be in the same place that when we started trying to repair our marriage. If this is a question you've asked yourself before, today what we're going to do is go over the healing process and we're going to talk about some ways that you can track your progress along the way so you don't get discouraged. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Husband's Coaches Corner, the podcast that teaches husbands how to love their wife every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris Scott, aka The Husband Coach. Welcome back to another episode right here on the Husband Coaches Corner in season two. Today, we are talking about when will my marriage improve? Now, before we dive too far into the content, I want to remind you that in the show notes, there's a link to sign up for my email list. And just for doing that, you get a copy of the Wife Journal completely for free. Check the show notes today. And last but not least, if you are listening to this on a platform that allows you to comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, please do that. It just helps get this episode or this content into the hands or ears of listeners who may benefit. So if you know someone, please consider sharing. Now, I want to give you guys the key takeaway. If you walk away from this message today from this podcast today, the one thing I want you to walk away with is anything worth having will take time and effort. All right. Anything worth having will take time and effort. Progress will not always be obvious, but it does not mean it's not there. If you walk away from this understanding that, then uh, I will consider that job well done and, you know, we can continue moving. But we're going to go over two key things today. The first one is the healing process. All right. And the second one is advice on how to track your progress. Let's go ahead and dive in, starting with the healing process. Healing takes time. And some of you are in relationships where a lot of healing is necessary. The areas that you may need to heal are trust, respect, understanding, faith, or confidence. Uh, And these areas, they don't come easy to heal. The process is simple, but the work is going to be, uh, is going to be real and you got to put it in. That's the only way that you're going to heal these areas. Uh, If you're not familiar with these areas, Think of these as pillars of your relationship. If you are lacking in any of these, your relationship is probably lacking. Uh, So pay attention. All right, let's go ahead and unpack trust a little bit. Now, trust, I personally believe, is the most important thing in a relationship. If you don't trust a person, how are you going to live with them for the rest of your life? So if your wife isn't trusting you because you've done something to violate her trust and you broke that down, then yeah, you're going to have some work to do. And every, every one of the other pillars kind of point back to trust. So what I've seen, uh, needing the most healing across, you know, the men that I coach is this area. I wish it was easy to rebuild, but the truth is this one, it really is hard. Uh, trust heals in small increments. It, it takes so long for trust to be rebuilt. It really does. All right. And the way that you rebuild trust is by doing small things like you take the trash out on a consistent basis. If that's something that, you know, your wife has been asking you to do, be consistent. I've talked about this all throughout season one, but I just want to re like stump the ground be consistent. The more consistent you are, the more you are going to build trust. Uh, the other ones or other ways that you can build trust is you come home after work and spend time with your wife instead of going out and doing something else. So if you're one of those guys that likes to hang out with the boys after work, or maybe even go to the gym after work, and I am not telling you to forego your physical fitness. What I'm saying is find a way to bring comfort to your wife where you're also building trust. Maybe invite her to go to the gym with you. Uh, that could be a way of working on that or build a safe space around you going to the gym. Uh, you know, and if you are constantly being accused of cheating, 
my recommendation is potentially find some equipment that you can bring to the house, you know, exercise bands or dumbbells or something like that, and just work out at the house. Because uh, as a man going to the gym, there are some, some traps, all right? Let's just be real. So if you are one of those guys where your trust is broken because of your wandering eyes, then get the same effect, you know, that you can working out at the house or somewhere in a safe space. All right. Uh, The other thing that you can do to build trust is give her full access to the bank account information. uh, So that way she can see where the money is going. This is something that I've seen in a lot of the men that I coach that have financial challenges in their marriage, which, you know, a lot of people say finance is the number one death to a marriage. Uh, I won't say that that's not true, but yeah, it it's not really the finance that's the death. It's the management of the challenge or the unmet need that becomes the death of the marriage. So give full access to the bank account information. That way she can take a look at it. All right. Uh, and if you're buying stuff, you had no business buying, then develop a plan to discuss how you're going to make large purchases. Um, or, you know, maybe even separating some money, you know, there's all kinds of different, uh, ways of dealing with this. Uh, you can take the financial peace university by Dave Ramsey. Look, there, there's so many ways that you can deal with your finances. Uh, no reason that that should be, uh, uh, an issue, uh, for trust. And then, the last one that I'll offer up to you uh, is in the reference of social media. Now, I've done an episode in season one talking about social media and how it is affecting your marriage. Uh, you should go check that out. But one of the things that I would really recommend that you do is pay attention to giving your wife the access to your social media. You shouldn't be doing anything on social media that questions or yeah, that gives your wife reason to question your trust and your faithfulness. Uh, that's something that you should be willing to do. In fact, I mean, my wife can look at all of my social media. It doesn't even matter to me. Uh, one, I don't really use social media, but two, even when I do, there's nothing that I do on social media that my wife can't follow up on. Um, and that builds confidence in her that I'm doing what I need to do, which then turns into trust that if I say I'm doing something then or not doing something, then she'll believe me. All right. Now, these are just examples. Uh, there are tons of other things that you should probably be aware of, but uh, yours can absolutely be different than the examples that I gave. The point is to identify whether trust was destroyed or shaken in your marriage and then start making efforts to improve it. So the next one is respect. Now, usually respect is lost when trust is lost. This is why I say everything goes back to trust. If you build trust, then you're probably going to have some respect. But uh, let's assume that you lost just a little bit of trust, but a whole bunch of respect. All right. To be clear, Uh, this is the respect that your wife has for you, right? Not the respect that you have for your wife, although you should have respect for your wife, but that's not really what our wives need from us. They need love, uh, read the book, love and respect. It'll point that out. Uh, Dr. Angriches or Emerson, whatever his name is, does a really good job at, at pointing that out. But if she does not respect you, it may feel like your efforts are meaningless, And one of the most demotivating things that you can ever run into is feeling meaningless, like the things that you do is meaningless. So uh, gaining back her respect is very, very important. All right. Now, here's what I'll give you as as a key takeaway on respect. If you are truly working to restore trust in your marriage, then the respect will come. All right. I'm going to say that again. If you are truly working to restore trust in your marriage, then the respect will come. I believe that wives need to respect their husbands and husbands should love their wife to the point of laying down their life. But the truth is, when our wife is hurt by us, they often find ways to hurt us back. 
In order for them to do this and keep doing this, a low level of respect for you has to be there or it's required for them to uh, have a lower level of respect for you, right? You can't hurt a person if you respect them to, you know, at least intentionally. You can unintentionally hurt a person, but uh, our wives are really retaliating, looking for some sort of defense mechanism. Um, and that's actually exactly what this is. This is a defense mindset. And here's the good news. It can be overcome based off of your actions. You can overcome this by staying committed to the trust steps uh, or, you know, at least the action plan that you have to rebuild trust by doing this. You will start to gain back the respect that was lost over the course of your marriage. Now, I would also like to add that sometimes respect is not present because of the way your wife was raised. In these situations, I believe it's important to seek out a counselor that does couples therapy or sessions. Uh, if your wife is having a hard time respecting you, even though you didn't do anything in your marriage, there could be a number of underlying causes that a counselor is going to be able to help identify and potentially help work you guys through. Um, but you need to address that with your wife first before you say, hey, let's go to a counselor and, you know, talk to her about it figure out what's going on and then offer up the idea of going to a counselor because uh, a man that has little respect from his wife is a very vulnerable man. You know, the truth is if our wife does not affirm us, which means that she has no respect, there's a level of, well, forget you then, you know, and that's what makes it a lot easier for us to wander away. So if there's any ladies listening to this episode and your husband has done something that has offended you, caused some sort of tension in your relationship, uh, I will encourage you to find a way to show him respect and affirm him, especially affirming the steps that he's taking to build your marriage back if he is now if he's not then find ways of respectfully uh discussing that with him and we're going to actually talk about that a little bit later when we talk about some ways of tracking progress all right now if they're um now let's go ahead and jump into understanding if you don't understand your wife, then your marriage is likely not going to improve. It's that simple, guys. Understanding is so important. There is a saying of knowing is half the battle. If this is a true statement, then I recommend you gain understanding at least in a few areas. Here they are. What makes your wife happy or sad? Really understand that. What makes her happy or sad? What inspires her? Understand that. What her goals are in life and how she feels about you. You see, these four areas that you're gaining understanding in, uh, they're really going to help you, one, learn who your wife is. Uh, and really be able to track that. Again, if you sign up for the email list, you get a free version of the wife journal. This is just a, a good guide of tracking things about your wife completely for free. There's a shameless plug. Check the show notes. All right. You, you should have a level of understanding in these areas, though, on what your wife expects from you, especially in these four areas. All right. If you don't know what that is, then you should really have a conversation with her to find out. Uh, now, here's a word of advice. During this conversation, don't get upset or speak. Uh, or I'm sorry. Don't get upset and speak far less than your wife. Don't go in guns ablazing and you just want to talk. Your job is to gain understanding. The way that you gain understanding is you listen and then you ask questions specifically on the thing that your wife just said. Refrain from being defensive in this time frame as well. Instead, just hear what she has to say, write down notes if necessary, and then go back and think about how you can turn this into an action plan that restores trust 
and her respect in you. All right. That's all you're, you're doing. You're gaining understanding so you can go back, reflect on this, and then develop your action plan so you can start building that trust and respect. Uh, and, and this is really a supporting thing. It's good to have understanding, but having understanding without, you know, building a action plan is really just having the knowledge, right? The, that's the half of the battle. The other half is actually doing something with the knowledge that you get. All right. Now, this does not make you weak if you're just sitting there and you're listening. All right. Contrary to what our culture wants us to believe, this does not make you a weak man uh, or a sissy or anything of that sort. What it does is it makes you a loving, kind man uh, that's really trying to figure out what can I do to improve my marriage, all right? And this is where you can really start to hone in and say, okay, when will my marriage get better? Now, here's the truth. I understand not all wives have great verbal communication skills, and sometimes it can get a little heated, even when you're just trying to gain some understanding and just talk to her and, and get to know her, right? So if this happens where your wife starts yelling and, and getting frustrated, first, I want you to ask her to rephrase a statement, uh, especially if it's getting you emotional, right? Um, ask her to rephrase the statement. What I found is when you ask someone to rephrase a statement, and this works in any type of conflict uh, conversation, but what I found is when you ask the person to rephrase the statement or uh, the question, it gets them to think about it a second way. Now, some wives or some people, they get even more frustrated when you ask them to rephrase the statement. So you have to follow that up with, I'm trying to gain deeper understanding, but the way that the question was presented, I don't know, or the way that the statement was presented, I don't have a conclusive uh like point, right? I can't conclude anything based off of that. And then if you're using like the uh, paraphrasing technique where you're telling, you're giving uh, feedback to the sender or the person that's speaking, you know, the understanding that rephrasing the statement allows you to paraphrase better. And then you can paraphrase that back to your wife works out great. All right. Uh, that, that's a very jumbled way of saying, ask her to rephrase the statement so you can paraphrase better. If you can't paraphrase, then that means you probably did not gain good understanding. So you need to ask her to rephrase the statement. Second thing, if you start to get into a, uh, frustrated area where you're, you're getting upset because of the things that she's saying, or if she's getting upset because of the things that she's saying, ask for a pause. It's very, very important that you ask for a pause. Like, hey, can we just pause the conversation for a second? Uh, and we'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we can come back to this. Now, it's better to have some conversations in chunks, right? You may have a very big issue that you guys are trying to overcome or tackle, or you're trying to gain an understanding of like some really deep hurts. You're not going to get it all in one setting. All right. Don't do that. Instead, take it in chunks. And once you have a lot of information, then say, Hey, you know, this is great information. Let's pause here so I can develop some sort of application or action plan so we can start working at least on this one little piece, right? The goal is that you can identify what your targets are for you to start to adjust and, and, and to fix and build up and then work on that and then revisit that conversation so that way you can keep making progress and ask your wife for feedback. This is something that, you know, I definitely discussed all throughout season one. It's important that we ask our wife for feedback because uh, we're being rated based off of her uh, scale. So you got to ask for feedback from your wife. The third thing that I want you to do is develop some safety words. Now, 
these safety words, it, it sounds a little corny to do this, but having a safety word or phrase that signals that either you're upset or she is getting to a point where uh, the conversation is not doing well, it is a clear delineator that we are hitting a point where we as a couple are not working well together. So it's time to take a pause. And that's a very, very good thing to have. All right. So develop some safety words or phrases. And both of you need to understand that when that word or that phrase is said, that there is a 30 second pause. All right. No one says anything for 30 seconds. And it doesn't have to be a literal 30 seconds, but make it very obvious that, hey, you know, it could be a toilet seat to. I can't even say that. Toilet seat toothbrush, right? Maybe that's your safety word or phrase. And then everyone stops talking. And the person who said the safety word then is the person who says, okay, the reason why I said that after 30 seconds has passed or, you know, a a good portion of time where both of you have had time to kind of calm down, then the person who said it says, hey, here's the reason why I said the safety word. And you get an opportunity to explain because guess what that's going to do? That's going to build even deeper understanding. Now, the last way uh, or the last thing that I would ask you to do in these situations is walk away. Now, this is after you have tried the first three And I don't encourage this as much because, you know, and this is the reason why it's the last one, but there is some good reason for you to walk away. All right. The goal with this particular exercise of gaining understanding isn't that you sit down and take all the verbal abuse and, you know, you just become the punching bag. Now, rightfully so, in in some cases, you will take some some punches because, you know, your relationship based off of where you guys are and what happened in it, you're going to have some, some things you got to deal with. However, the, the goal here is not that you just sit there and hear all of the negative things about you, right? Because you're not gaining understanding about you. You're trying to gain understanding about your wife. So your wife should really just be sharing uh, the way that she feels when certain things happen, uh, because that's what you're trying to gain understanding about. Uh, when it becomes a, you are this and you suck at this and, you know, that becomes a little discouraging, right? And depending on going back to that respect thing, depending on the level of respect that your wife has for you, you may be opening yourself up to or subjecting yourself to some uh, challenges. So the goal here is if the first three items does not work for you, walking away is better than sitting there and taking the verbal abuse. All right. Now you do need to go back after you guys have calmed down and, you know, there's been a little bit of a of break, then you need to go back and resume that conversation. Don't leave it as you walked away. Because then that's that, that's a signal from you that you discredit what your wife has to feel or say. And that's not the case, because what you're trying to do is get her to you know share without getting overly emotional. Moral of the story, as the you know, at least as the person who's trying to rebuild the marriage, you have to own the the space in which you set the conversation you got to set the stage own that conversation and make sure that the parameters inside of that conversation are followed uh and when it starts to get outside of the productive zone it is better to walk away because what you don't want to do is say something that you regret uh it's like words it's like putting toothpaste back into the tube it just doesn't work right as soon as you say it that word those words or those phrases are out there and sometimes our emotions get the better of us and we don't filter things the best way so yeah uh 
there, there you have it. Gain understanding, long way of saying gain understanding, have a conversation. Just wanted to leave you with some ground rules for that. And then the last one is faith or confidence in you. Uh, and mind you, all four of these things that I discussed, they go both ways, right? You have to have trust, confidence, understanding, faith uh, in, in your wife, but she should have this in you, right? Or your wife should have this in you and you should have this in your wife. But here's the deal. The definition of faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now, like I said before, everything goes back to trust. I would like to point out that this is really a confidence in all areas that are unseen. What does that mean? Uh, Meaning our wife should be confident that you will always put her interests first. This is what, where her faith in you or her confidence in you to perform or what you will do is always going to be in the best interest of her. All right. Our wives, they long to be loved by us. And if what we are doing is something that will help us move forward in that relationship, then yeah, that, that is, you know, this is a part of the, uh, the healing process, right? We have to make sure that we're regaining that, that confidence and faith in our ability, uh, which ultimately leads to her trusting us. All right. And our wife should feel confident that we won't do anything that will harm her. It does go hand in hand with trust, as I've already said, but this is more of the reassurance part of trust because trust without confidence is uncertainty. When was the last time you were uncertain about something? How did you respond to that? And now think about how that relates to your wife and your relationship And ask yourself, is that really what I want? Do I want uncertainty in my wife? If the answer to that is no, then there you go. You already got your answer. Now, if the answer to that is, yeah, I don't care, then you got a problem and we need to, you know, work through that. So we should be striving to make our wives uh, certain on the things we seek their trust in. All right. That's not a hard thing to figure out. That's the healing process. Uh, And now we're going to go through the, how do you track your progress? Because this is really the, the way that you answer the question, when will my marriage get better? All right. Progress is not always what you think it is. All right. You can track your progress in a few different ways. One of the ways is how consistent are you in performing things on your action plan? If you are, you know, if you have things that you're doing to build your relationship with your wife, how are you continuing to build that relationship? And are you being consistent with doing the things that you need to do? Because if you are, then Keep track of that, mark it down and say, hey, I'm tracking my progress. I'm, I'm able to say out of seven days in the week, I was consistent five of those days. All right. Next week, I need to get to, to six. And then the following week, I need to get to seven. And then you show how long you've been able to do it at a consistent basis, uh, because that in itself is a way of saying, no, I am putting in the work and I was able to do this. But more importantly, share this with your wife, because if your wife is not aware of certain things, maybe she just doesn't see it. Right. Uh, And that's not saying like, hey, look at me. I took the trash, like get on a soapbox after you take the trash out, like, or, you know, announce, okay, I'm taking out the trash. Uh, That's not what I'm saying. All right. What I'm saying is if there's, let's just say taking out the trash is one of the problems that you guys ran into, uh, at the end of every week, whenever your trash day is, you can say, Hey, you know, the trash is out on the curb, right? And once a week, having that reminder will let her know. Now, 
your wife will probably respond after a few weeks. I get it. You took the trash out. Okay. At least now she acknowledged that you took the trash out, right? Uh, and the consistency of you always telling her, Hey, I took the trash out. Hey, I took the trash out. You know, it's like the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease or it gets the oil. Uh, same concept here. The more you let your wife know, Hey, I'm doing these things. It brings awareness, which then makes her have to make a decision on how she feels about the awareness that you're bringing. All right. The next thing that you can do is your attitude changing toward your wife. Man, is your attitude changing? If your attitude is not changing toward your wife, you are not going to be successful. You have to change your attitude because the things that you are probably accused of or the challenges that you've ran into, they're probably going to continue on if you don't change your attitude. All right. It's hard to build a relationship and build your marriage if you don't take time to change the way that you see your wife and the way that you view your wife. Got a whole series on that. Check season one, uh, how do I see my wife? It, It really breaks that down, but your attitude is important. Number three, is your wife's attitude changing towards you? Now, this is a great thing to track the progress on. Uh, and ultimately, this is probably what most of you are asking the question. Uh, when will my marriage get better? Well, when your wife changes her attitude towards you, your marriage tends to get better. But the way that your wife changes her attitude is by you being consistent in doing the things that build trust, confidence and respect in your marriage. And that comes through gaining understanding, which is why I went through all of that ahead of time. All right. So is your wife's attitude changing toward you? If it is, mark it down. If it isn't, mark that down and figure out, go get that understanding so you can build that trust, respect, and and, and the faithfulness in your marriage uh, before you move forward. All right. Are you and your wife spending more time together? This is a great way of tracking your progress. If you didn't spend much time together before, but you're starting to spend more and more time together, even if it's as simple as uh, she's coming with me to the grocery store, right? Uh, the, The car ride to the grocery store, you know, these are opportunities for you to have conversations with your wife. But if she is just present and normally she wouldn't be because she couldn't stand you, One, you're probably seeing an attitude shift in her. Two, you should also have an attitude shift. But three, this is showing you that she's open to being with you. And now it's your time to be consistent, to show up and show her that you love her. All right. Number five, is your wife doing things for you that she never did before? Now, this is a true game changer. This is where you know. If your wife is coming back and, you know, you guys are really building your relationship, if your wife is doing things that she never did for you before. Now, mind you, these are positive things, right? Good things. Uh, This is a good sign that your marriage is getting better. And this should be fairly obvious, but sometimes we miss these things and it's like, oh, well, I just expected her to always do that. Uh, And our expectations are probably the biggest culprit to us not identifying that our marriage is getting better, right? So if your wife starts doing things for you that she never did before, like maybe it's something simple, like she makes your plate, right? She makes your plate. She never did that before, but now after, you know, a few months of you working on your marriage, uh, one day you're at a friend's house and she brings you a plate of food. It catches you completely off guard and you're like, oh, uh, thank you. Well, that could be a sign that your wife is starting to show you more respect. And I want to be clear. I'm not saying that women should make their husband's food or wives should make their husband's food or at least a plate or whatever, right? What I'm saying is if she's doing it as a act of love because she wants to take care of you, that is a sign that your marriage is going in the right direction. All right. Number six, does your wife check your phone and does she respond positively? Now, 
This is probably earlier on in the responses, but if you were accused of doing some uh, untrustworthy things and your wife is like, I want to see your phone and check your messages and all that other stuff, uh, one, don't be sneaky and start deleting any suspect text message. Uh, Instead, avoid those conversations altogether. And if there is a conversation that happens in that manner, share it with your wife and discuss it with her. Uh, it, It may set her off eventually or, you know, initially, but you, you are an adult, you're a grown man, and you have to have the the courage to go to your wife and say, Hey, look, here's what happened. And this is not what I want you to think that happened. Uh, and just break it down. Now, if it continues to happen, then you really need to cut off contact with that other person who keeps sending you these messages if there's something uh, suspect and it's happening on a consistent basis, right? And if you own that conversation without saying, oh, you just don't get it and, you know, you tell your wife that she's all wrong, uh, one, that never ends well for anyone, uh, but two, you gain a level of respect from your wife because you're breaking stuff down, bringing it to her attention, sharing it with her. This is a better way of dealing with those types of situations. All right. But if your wife checks her phone and she responds positively, this is a good way of saying your marriage is going in the right direction. And then the last thing that I'll give you as a how to track your progress. Does your wife check the bank account and respond positively? If you have a financial one, this is obvious. If you have financial challenges, I should say, this is obvious. If your wife is checking the bank account and she is pleased with what she's seen, that means you are doing a good job on your action plan. Uh, And there's no like hidden secrets between the two of you, right? Transparency is one of the best things in a marriage because it leads to deeper understanding, which is one of the pillars of developing a intimate relationship. All right. Uh, we already went over those four pillars. I'm not going to go over them again, but these are just a few ways that you can track progress in your marriage. There are more things, but you should spend some time reflecting on your actions and your wife's actions after you have implemented a few of these changes uh, or changes in your action plan. Now, if you don't have an action plan, that's perfectly fine. I have an episode coming up that will discuss what action plans are so you can start to love your wife every single day, which is, you know, the tagline of the show. Uh, But really, it empowers you to start rebuilding your marriage. And that's the important thing. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Your relationship can and will improve if both of you, uh, you and your wife, have put in the work to rebuild it. It takes time, but I promise you it will come. Don't compare others' marriages to your own because you guys are different, right? You're two different couples. That should go without saying. Don't compare your marriage to your neighbors uh, because your neighbor has different challenges than you have, all right? Don't do it. Instead, stay focused and committed to your wife and celebrate the road of success with your wife as you start to track your progress. Uh, Be excited for the small things because it's the small things that lead into larger things, which ultimately rebuild your marriage. And that is what we're trying to do here. So hope you guys enjoyed today's content. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend, and don't forget to sign up for the email list in the show notes below. And until the next time, I want you guys to find a way to love your wife every day. Peace. Peace.